So this is an introduction in how to add text in Illustrator. Where you do that is with the big T type tool. I'm going to right click and click on here to tear it off so we can look at all of them. And with text, I often like to work on a separate layer on top of the logo. Um, of course, there are times where you might want it embedded or sandwiched in between, so you'd want to work in that logo. But if the text is just going to be on top, I like to just go right on top and lock that background layer so I can just work right on top of it without any of this getting in my way. So, different ways to start a text box you can click and then just start typing. You will notice with this new Creative Cloud version of Photoshop and Illustrator, whenever you click with the type tool, it fills it with what's called lorem ipsum text. If it's a bigger text box, it will give you even more of that. That is not Latin, even though it looks like it. It is graphic designer's dummy fill text. And so why that is, is because it has the rhythm of real text but it's just gibberish and it's there as fill text so that if you are doing a magazine layout you can get that all set up before the author is actually done and sends you the words of the article um, and so that's what that is but if I just start typing I don't even have to select it or anything I just click to start the text box and then I start typing hello GDIN how are you that would be a weird logo but you know what I'm saying so with this kind of text box when I select it I can scale up or down, I can rotate it, and the text will kind of come with me. So it is its own kind of free floating text box. Keep in mind though that from traditional graphic design, as soon as you scale a font out of proportion, it is no longer that same font. So to make sure that you are scaling in proportion, what is the tool that you want to do that with? It's the shift key. So if I hold down the shift key while I'm scaling, it will scale it in proportion and it will remain technically that font. Whereas this one that I distorted is no longer the Myriad Pro font, which I don't recommend using for your designs because it is the standard default font for all Adobe programs. So that is one way to just click and type. If you want to confine the area, so say I was actually wanting to type in a place where it would fit in my logo, I could even click just below it to show you. I'm going to click and drag a box before I type. And that is going to fill it with text or allow me to start typing. And see, I'm, whoa, typos. I'm in a text box now that wraps for me. When I select this and rotate, it rotates. The text does not rotate. It rotates the box but not the text. So when you do it this way, the text and the box aren't exactly connected. Um, you can scale with or without shift, but it will only scale the box, not the text. Okay, so this is good to know. When you just click and type, the box and the text are connected. When you click and create a bounding shape and type in it, so click and drag, then they are not connected. So it just depends on what you want to do. If you want to be able to turn your text so it's sideways, then you'll want to click and type. If you want to be able to fill a shape with the text and have the text always readable left and right, you'll want to create a bounding box. You can use any of the shapes to put text in. We'll deal with this a little bit more in uh, typography, but you can actually fill the shape, and that is this next one, the area type tool. So let's see, just to make things easy, I'm going to come back into this type tool, select this by triple clicking and command C, or go edit, copy. Now I'm going to click on this shape up here with the path, with the area type tool and command V multiple times to fill it and you will see it starts to fill the text. The shape of it goes away so if you wanted the shape in the background you'd want to duplicate that first. But you see I can start to make 
my text fit in the shape. You can do things like justify it. And the smaller you make it up here in the character or up here in your control palette, the more it will fit in that shape. Keep an eye out when you are using any kind of text boxes for this. Let me show you. So there is now more text in here than will fit. And Illustrator is going to let me know with this little plus red plus sign. So this is letting me know that there is text missing. So to make it visible, I can click on that box. And you can edit all of your text up here in the character palette. You can make it smaller until it all fits. See that red box went away. So I know that somewhere kind of in between here. So let's see, 10 to 9. I wonder if it'll let me do 9.5. There we go. And then it all fits. In the character menu, you can also choose your fonts and choose your font family. And so there are all kinds of examples, even emoji ones, and you can see them in here. When we do typography second semester, we'll get into downloading additional fonts from the internet. But if you don't see one that you like, let me know and I can help you get one now. But there are some pretty great fonts. Um, I have a few more than you will see. I have some for client projects that we've done, but um, you can check them out. And if there are arrows here, it means they have more options. So unlike Word, you can't just put bold or italics on any font. You actually have to have it as an option. So if I chose Helvetica Bold, then that would give me the bold version. Or then it loads it up here too. The font style, I could do light, light oblique. This one comes with lots of different options. If you happen to have a font that doesn't have any options, so maybe I want this DK face your fears because I think it looks cool, but it doesn't have the option to bold it. What we do is we'll put a stroke on the text that's the same color. I don't know why it's taking a moment. There we go. That's the same color as the text. You got to be careful because, like with this one, it's pretty small text, it's really eating the font and making it disappear. So let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. And another thing I can do is go into the stroke and choose one of the decimal strokes. And just so you know, if you keep doing minus, one point is as small as it can get, and then it will just disappear the stroke. So if you want to get any smaller than one point, you actually have to, it is trying to catch up with me one at a time from all those clicks of changing the font. So you have to go into the menu and choose the smaller ones, whether the smaller than a point. So see, I can make the text bigger, the stroke smaller, and now that gives me kind of a fake bold. For text, just like with other objects, I can have a fill color and a stroke color be different. Sometimes you will see if your stroke is too thick, it will envelop the fill color and um, you won't be able to see it, so you might have to adjust the stroke from that. You can also adjust the opacity of your type. So you could have it a little bit lighter if you want it kind of more subtle. And now I see that if I was going to put that on top of black, I would want to pick a stroke, maybe a gray instead of a black and maybe not lower opacity because it looks muddy. So see, I'm going to just start experimenting and trying all of these tools. This is really a great opportunity to learn a bunch of new things in Illustrator. Illustrator also has the ability, one of my favorite things to do is type on a path. So you can draw any path with just about any of these tools. So I can take a paintbrush and draw a line or use the lines of one of these existing shapes and choose a type on a path tool. And as soon as I click on it, notice the path itself is going to disappear. It stays set with my last font, but there it is with lorem ipsum. So I can put my own text in there. And then to change the font, you can either highlight it, but you don't have to. If you just switch to your selection tool while you're and select the path and the text for any of these, you can go in to the character menu here or here and choose a new font, get a larger or smaller size, 
so you don't actually have to highlight the text to do that. When you're doing the type on a path, it gives you control over where it starts. So you'll see on there somewhere, depending on where you clicked on the line, you'll see at the beginning that there is this slider that lets you determine where it starts. There is also one at the end that lets you determine where it ends. And then there's one in the middle that allows you to flip over the text on the other side of the line. So you have a lot of control and freedom. And like I said, you can also use the type on a path tool. I'm going to duplicate this so I can show you how to fill it as well. And remember to duplicate, you just drag, hold down Option and drag something away from itself. If you happen to have a black keyboard, it's that you hold down Alt and drag something away from itself. So now I'm going to deselect to make sure I'm not clicked on anything and go to the path type on a path tool and type on that and you'll see now it will surround the star but then as we saw earlier I can fill the star by using the area type tool and filling it in there and so that would be you know if you wanted a star that was or a shape that was outlined and filled you could do it that way you could also duplicate the shape before you type on it and keep its lines then the next type tools are all vertical type tools of the same kind and so how they type is vertically instead of horizontally. Let's get over here. I'm running out of room. These are locked down here. I'm just going to move these totally out of my way to give us enough room. Here we go. All right, so the vertical type tools align the letters vertically. Um, you have to be careful. This is not the most legible thing. So for a whole sentence like this, it might not work. But for something very simple like a name or acronym or initials, it might be just the right thing to give your logo some flair. If you look in the character palette, you will also see other adjustments. If you mouse over them, it will tell you what they do. So that's font size. The letting is the spacing between letters. The kerning is the spacing between two characters. The tracking is the space between your selected characters. You can vertically and horizontally scale your type. Then you can also set the baseline, which is the, the lower line of something. So where does it start or finish. If you select the whole thing, then you're just moving the entire one. But say I wanted the G to stand out a little bit, I could select just it and go in and make it larger. I could make it shift off to the side. I could also rotate just a single character. Hmm, that kind of is a funny animation. And then here's just a few options, all caps, small caps, superscript, which is like exponents, subscript, underline is an option. So now because I'm in vertical, that's why it's showing me the underline is next to it, or strike through, which are other text options. Okay, so see, with some simple things, I can start to have some fun with text. A cool thing you can do with text in Illustrator is be able to turn it into a shape and edit it. So when I do that, I always make sure that I hold down Option and duplicate it because once you turn it into a shape, it is no longer editable. So if you happen to do a typo, it's going to be stuck unless you leave a version. So that's why I'll always take a version and just throw it off my artboard so I can still go back. And then you select it with your selection tool. Go to Object, nope, go to Type, and choose Create Outlines. And now what you'll see is that has turned it into a shape. I cannot go into the Type tool anymore and select. It just creates a new type box. So I'm going to Command-Z and undo that. Now to be able to edit this, you want to click outside of it so it's not selected. And zoom in a bit. And now I can use my Direct Select tool that we talked about earlier and I can mouse over to see where my paths and my anchors are and I can either grab one individual path and move it 
and then maybe grab another one you'll see the little handles there that gets into the curves I'll go over what those are in the next video for the pen tool so see you can start to edit and adjust <laughs> that kind of looks like a rhinoceros horn so see how you can start to incorporate the text and the mark into your logo you can also use a marquee selection to dra drag and draw, click and drag over multiple points and then be able to move those. So you can really have some fun. This is definitely not this font anymore once I've edited it this far, but you can do either more dramatic things or sometimes you just do a little subtle editing to get maybe this to flow into your mark. So think about how you can incorporate typography 